During the last 24 hours, the Russian army took control of six settlements of Ukraine. This was reported by the Ministry of Defense of Russia. The North Group of the Russian Armed Forces has taken control of Borisovka, Ogurtsovo, Pletanevka, Pilnaya and Streliakia of Kharkiv region, as well as Karamik settlement of Donetsk region of Ukraine. It was reported that within 24 hours, the Russian army struck the weapons depot of the armed forces of Ukraine, the factory where unmanned aerial vehicles are produced, and the Patriot Air Defense System Division. Massive strikes were carried out to a depth of 70 kilometers, and Ukrainian armed forces facilities in the depths of the defense were hit. Both infrastructure facilities, weapons and equipment were destroyed. We worked very actively drones, Lancet. Two bridges were destroyed, in the area of Steri Saltov and near the Volchansky farms. More than 40 people from the border guards, the armed forces of Ukraine and the defense forces were taken prisoner. As Rybar writes, despite the successes of the first day, the assault groups of the Russian armed forces have only just approached the first line of defense of the armed forces of Ukraine, built in the Kharkiv region. The operation has just begun, there are fierce battles ahead, and they may drag on for a long time, given the defense built by the Ukrainians. Russian forces take control of Umansk village and install the USSR flag. Build. Russian invasion forces have entered the village of Umansk, located west of Avdiivka, and reportedly planted a USSR flag there, said an expert in open data analysis at Build, Julian Ropka. After Russia captured Avdiivka, Ukrainian troops initially held the defense west of the town along the Berdichi, Semenivka, Olivka, Tonenke Line. However, by the end of March, the Russian army breached this line and advanced westward. Subsequently, the Ukrainian armed forces established defensive positions in villages to the west, with Umansk being the first. The Russian troops have now entered Umansk, stated Ropka. They installed the red flag of the USSR with a hammer and sickle on the monument to those who died in World War II. While the southern and western part of the village remain under the control of the Ukrainian army, satellite images suggest that Russian forces are actively engaging Ukrainian trenches east of Umansk. Ukrainian troops appear to be withdrawing westward along the northern side of the lake within the village. The Russian troops successfully established a foothold near Otoretny in Donetsk Oblast, utilizing four brigades to achieve this advancement, stated Nazar Voloshin, spokesperson for the Kortitsia Operational and Strategic Troop Grouping, on April the 27th. Ukrainian Armed Forces Commander-in-Chief Alexander Sirsky confirmed on April the 28th that the situation at the front had intensified. Ukrainian defenders withdrew to the west of the villages of Berdichi, Semenivka and Novomarkailivka. Ukrainian officials have emphasized the importance of military aid packages from the west to enable Ukrainian forces to fend off new attacks. The Russians advanced south of Novokalinov, east of Umansk and south of Novomarkailivka. Active hostilities continue near Vimka, Krasnoharivka, Vodian and Robotyne. Russians managed to break through the defenses of the 59th Infantry Brigade and have completely occupied Pervomaisk, the battle for which actually began in August 2022. The village became one of the hottest spots in this war and has cost the enemy a high price. According to Deep State, the Ukrainian defenders also paid a high price, especially the guys from the glorious 59th Separate Motorized Infantry Brigade, who desperately held on to every basement and kept up the defense even when completely surrounded. Shoigu's failure in Africa makes Putin blush. Russian Defense Minister Sergei Shoigu is in big trouble. The head of the Kremlin, Vladimir Putin, has serious claims to him because of Africa. This was reported by the Russian Vichik OGPU, Telegram channel which is connected with the Russian security services. One of the most sensitive for the state failures of Sergei Shoigu as Defense Minister is the African Corps project, the resource reported. 
According to it, Shoigu was tasked with strengthening Russia's military presence in Africa through Russian private military companies. He failed to cope with it. The core eagerly awaited by many local leaders actually existed only on paper, and the colossal budgets allocated to its realization went into the pocket of Novatech head Gennady Timchenko and functionaries of the Ministry of Defense affiliated with him, the Russian Telegram channel said. He specified that a number of dictators in Africa were very happy to get Russian at their disposal. However, when trying to put it on paper, they got bogged down in bureaucratic costs. The highest authorities had to blush for the African core because the contingent was promised, but in the end it did not materialize. As a result of the actions of Timchenko and various managers in the Russian Defense Ministry who brought the country to the point where it almost lost a key region for itself, while significantly weakening its previously gained positions, the Russian resource reported. Recently, Vladimir Putin met with Tula Oblast governor and known Wagner Group affiliate Alexei Dumin, further indicating that Putin may be seeking to reduce Sergei Shoigu's power by balancing him with rivals. Putin likely deliberately publicized his meeting with Dumin following the high-profile arrest of Russian Deputy Defense Minister Timur Ivanov on the 24th of April.